I'm JC, and uh, welcome to another ceramic hour. Um, okay, so we're just working on this. Um, let me just grab it real quick. So we are working on coil building a pitcher. Um, this is just kind of like a personal project. I'm making it for my mom. Um, yeah, so, um, I don't know, I don't, no, we're not gonna finish, like, finish it <laughs> exactly today, but I think we might be, uh, closing in on, like, the coil portions of it. There's gonna be a lot of trimming that is gonna happen, um, just because, like, the coils are, like, so thick. Um, and that really helps like build the height up, um, but we're gonna have to do like a lot of trimming. Um, so let me just kind of like slide this over here and roll out, what, how is this? Okay, that's not too bad. Just kind of like. Oh, let me see if you can see what's going on. <clears throat> and just so you know, this is like, this is not like a tutorial per se. Um, I'm not really a, um, I'm not really a hand builder. Um, all the stuff that I was taught was on the wheel. So just so you guys know, um, I might not be doing things exactly right. Um, but hopefully we can still make something pretty cool. Um, Ceramic hours are just kind of like a look into like a day in my life. Um, I usually do jump on or like, maybe not like jump on, but like I usually do um, sit down and work on uh, my ceramics um, for an hour, like for my lunch hour um, during the work week. So that's what this is. Um... Because, I don't know, like, um, <clears throat> there are not, like, a lot of people that share, um, like, the full process of how things are made. And, like, me, <laughs> like, I've been left wondering, like, how exactly are you supposed to do this thing? Or, um, like they'll like people will leave out like the boring stuff um but here it is <laughs> like um basically we have a lot of projects start to finish um kind of like um if you check out the other videos we have on youtube um so we have where we have a lot of things we're building um, from scratch and then we go through the trimming process of cutting away any excess clay um, and like maybe like some small adjustments like touch-ups that you might do and then um, and then I take them to well they'll, they'll like dry out all the way and then I take them to get bisque fired and then I have some videos not of like every single piece that I have but I have some videos showing um, the basic process of maybe applying underglaze, and then we have some of applying um, brush on glazes, um, and then like um, a follow up video of like how they turned out fired. So you can actually like see a lot of that and just like actually see like the kind of work that goes into making a piece. Um, like a lot of like a lot of the work that's going into it um basically start to finish I haven't like 
filmed me sanding down pieces. So once you actually have it glaze fired, the bottom part that you kept unfired, like there's, well, there's like no glaze there. That's what I mean. Um, it's usually pretty rough. So you have to go and you have to sand that. Um, I haven't included that. <laughs> it's not really that exciting, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, just using like some sanding paper to, um, to touch, touch up, um, any kind of like, um, undersides of your pieces and stuff, just like make them nice. Um, so yeah, um, I'm just gonna, I don't, I didn't like, I watched a few like coil build, build, building videos and I personally kind of want to just like smush the clay in between the pieces, like in between the coils. I haven't seen anybody do that. <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like maybe you're not supposed to do that. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Um... What I have seen a lot of people do is, like, they're just kind of, like, um, rubbing, like, maybe with a tool or something like this to combine the coils more. I don't really, I don't know. It's, like, a lot more fun to just, like, push it in here. Um, if you actually do coil building and if this is an issue, please tell me. <laughs> um, hopefully not anything bad I don't know it's just kind of fun I find it a little bit more fun to just like smush the clay around like this <laughs> um and I'm not losing um so much of like so you kind of have to do it like on the inside but also the outside and then you're kind of losing a little bit of like possibly that height or um or the width. I mean, we don't really need a lot of the width. Because um, we're just going to trim it off. I don't know. Maybe that's why they don't do it. Is because like a tr the trimming thing. You're just going to trim a lot of that off. I don't know. It's just like feels more satisfying <laughs> to do it like this way. Um, I, I don't know if you're not supposed to do it like this. I've never taken any hand building classes. Just so you know, um, the classes that I took were only for wheel throwing, so I don't, <clears throat> um, I don't know like a ton <laughs> about hand building, um, and yeah, just so you guys know, um, it's kind of looking like a vase, but I suppose that is pretty normal because the picture is kind of going to be a vase shape. <laughs> I don't have like a very specific idea of like what it's going to look like when it's done. I'm just kind of um Thinking like it's gonna have like a curvy shape going on. Um, <laughs> um, I guess we'll just put this off to the side while I roll out another coil. <laughs> I feel like this should not be taking this long to do all these coils. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I mean, this is like, this is literally like I've said uh, in the last stream, like. <sighs> Um, possibly, like, so, I think I've only done coil building, like, maybe, like, three times before doing this one. That's kind of a guess. That's, like, if it was more than that, it was not many more. <laughs> um, like, I don't know. I just, like, um... So the classes that I took, this was like, um, this was after I had graduated college and I, I've told you guys in like some other videos, um, like how I got into ceramics, but I'll just like 
try and make this quick <laughs> for anyone that has already heard it. Um, so I graduated with a design and graphic or with a degree in graphic design. Um, I took a bunch of other art classes because I just love like learning how different pieces are made and all of that. Like I just love like a lot of like art, art stuff. Um, I love making different things in different ways and just like learning about the processes and like, um, just like kind of like learning about like, oh, it might look easy, but like there are actually like these kind of challenges that come with it. And just like, I don't know, just learning more about pieces and really kind of like understanding and, um, having more, um, I guess just a wider understanding of like how, like the processes and like, um, uh, ways that, um, other people make, um, their pieces and just like, um, I don't know, because like a lot of people, like people that do not do art, they'll be like, oh, well, I can do, I could do that. You know, I can make that. But like, there are a lot of things that you don't know that are involved and like, you know, I don't want to be like one of those people. And I just love like learning about like what goes into different things. Anyway, (laughs) I'm really getting sidetracked. Um, (laughs) so, um, so I did take quite a few different classes in college I actually never took a ceramics class um, because I spent a lot of my kind of like extra classes in painting because I really thought like um, I wanted to like combine painting with my graphic design work um, like as like you can like paint like watercolor backgrounds to use like um, in design in graphic design kind of things or um, possibly, like, landscapes or, like, all kinds of different stuff you could, like, incorporate into it. And I just, like, that's why I spend a lot of my time doing is taking extra classes in painting. Um, and I do really, I do really like painting. I do mostly watercolor, um, if I am going to do it now or digital, um, possibly. Um, but I do really like watercolor. Um, anyway. So, graduate college, and then, um, oh, I should really do the inside before we, like, taper this off. I'm sorry if you, I don't know how much you're going to be able to see of me smushing clay into the inside of this, but that, I'm basically just doing the same thing that we did a few minutes ago on the inside. Um, so... Graduate college, and then I got my first graphic design job at a university. Not the one that I went to, but um, one in... So I'm from Michigan, and the one that I got was in Nebraska. Um, so drove out all the way to Nebraska and got settled in that. And um, the one of the perks of working for the university was that you could take tuition-free classes and I was like heck yeah like I'm just like I love learning I love like I love that I love learning about um art stuff and like I took a bunch of um different art classes um when I was when I was still in college and I was like heck yeah like I love this so um I looked at like the classes that they had and it wasn't like um like there were a lot of classes I had already taken um so I looked at kind of like what they offered and I was like well I never I've never taken ceramics before um I just never felt like there was a way that I could make that like applicable to graphic design like the ones that I took and the ones that you're required to take are stuff that are similar so every graphic designer is supposed to take um an intro painting and drawing 
um, because that could go into like logo design. Um, You're supposed to take um, like photography because a lot of graphic designers um, have to take their own photos if it's like a small um, if it's a small business that you're working for, like they might not have a photographer, like working for them. So then you have to go out and take the photos, <laughs> um, th- like stuff like that. Like there is nothing about ceramics. So I was like, yeah, I can make ceramics and then like include that into my design work. Like, I mean, there are things <laughs> But it's just so, so much more limiting in, like, how you would do that, Um, if that makes sense. Um, (laughs) Like, you could do, like, um, uh, like, Sagmeister, he does very odd things. Um, One of, like, his, one of his most, like, kind of, like, maybe like influential um most known pieces is like he's a graphic designer but he does some weird stuff and he he had like his assistant like use an exacto knife to carve into um sagmeister like the cover of a book like he carved in the text um into this guy's skin um (laughs) which is super weird super um shocking (laughs) like there there are things like you could take clay and you could you know write you could make the cover of a book and then photograph it and then apply that to the book or something like you could do some weird thing uh if you wanted to but that is not (laughs) really clay is not something people think of like that'd be very like random (laughs) if you're using like clay for some kind of like (laughs) instead of like typography (laughs) for like a book cover I don't know it would just be super random I mean the possibility is there but um I just didn't really find it that applicable um and I was like what the heck you know like Uh, In college, one of my friends kind of, like, encouraged me to try it out. And I was just like, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. I feel like I wouldn't have, like, any ideas on, like, what to make. Which is super ironic because I have, like, unlimited ideas now. Um, And I, I don't know. I just, like... Like, I literally didn't know, like, anything about pottery. There are not, like, my school did not have very many people that were potters. Um, or uh, we, whatever you want to say. Um, ceramists. Um, <clears throat> like, like, I didn't know any of those people, really. Because um, there weren't, <laughs> well, there weren't that many. Um, um, and I don't know, I just, like, was, like, I don't know, I got to the university, I was, like, maybe I'll try this out, you know, the, um, it wasn't exactly free, it was tuition free, um, there were other things that I did need to pay for, but, like, a lot, like, the majority of it was covered, um, as you can imagine, um, I still need to play, pay a share fee, which is basically covering the cost of the supplies that the class gives you. Um, they just kind of like do a bulk cost to everybody and then you can use as much clay, as much glaze, as much whatever, um, they have available to you as you want. <sighs> So you better get your money's worth, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Um, So, um, and then um, we had to buy our own tools, um, just like any other art class. I had to buy trimming tools and um, sponges and, like, all the things. 
not like a, a ton ton of just like um the you know all the basics a feddling knife some different size sponges a bucket spray bottle um and then some things were like provided to us um like we made our own um what was that called? Um, like the wire that you use um, to remove pots off the wheel. We made like our own things of those, a uh, fishing line in class. Um, and like, whatever. Um, where the heck was I going with this? <laughs> <laughs> um... I think I was talking about why I don't hand build. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry. I'm <laughs> just like, wait, well, how do I start talking about this? Um, yeah, so like I don't know. Like I just like I um well actually just before I did sign up for the university class, like so I was hired at the university in um around like March or something so um you know there aren't really classes to take over the summer so I kind of like looked at the choices and stuff and then I kind of like thought like oh maybe I should try pottery and what I actually did um I kind of forget about sometimes but um I did actually go to a local studio um that offered pottery classes so I just tried it out um, to see, like, just to, like, see if that was something that interested me, like, actually, like, doing that, um, for an entire, like, semester. So, I went to the local pottery, uh, studio, and I just, like, I took a class. Um, usually they offer, usually studios offer, um, classes or memberships, um, it kind of depends on the place, maybe. Um, so I took a class, so I had access to the studio, and, um, I think they, like, yeah, they provided, uh, clay and glaze to us. This memory is a little bit fuzzy, because it was, like, kind of a while ago, and it wasn't really for very long. Um... I think it was like um maybe like one or two classes a week for like I don't know, like maybe a couple hours for a couple weeks. I I really can't remember exactly what the thing was. <laughs> um and then um and then I think like you could just show up at any time during the studio hours and like come in and just like work. I think that's how it was. Um, and I really liked it. Like, I really liked it. I was like, this is so neat. Um, I, uh, <laughs> the pieces that I made during that time were really awful, as you can imagine. Um, doing it for the first time ever, basically. Um, I did do pottery in elementary school, but I'm, that's, that doesn't count because <laughs> I literally don't remember it. I just remember that we did do it, um, but they were so bad. I don't have them. I don't think I have them. If I have them, any of those pieces, they're like tucked away into some storage tote in a closet somewhere. Um, <laughs> I literally don't know. I think I threw them out because they were just really horrible. But I was like, this is, I, like, I was having a lot of fun doing it. I really liked it. And I decided, like, then I was like, yeah, like, this is really cool. Like, I do like this. I just need to do this more and actually, like, 
uh, just do it more and kind of like really get to know what I am trying to do, what I, you know, um, with stuff. Cause I don't know, I think things, I think things cracked and broke apart and any thing that you would expect something to happen to some beginners pot is I'm pretty sure what happened but I was just like I really like this um anyway so I did do that uh, which that class was um I do remember we did go on the wheel and we did do um some hand building I did try coil building and I tried to do like some little slab building um <clears throat> and then um the university I don't know if it's like the same for all universities um but the university that I worked at um they are um <clears throat> The way that they have their um, classes set up is that, like, you choose um, something to start with. So you either choose um, intro to wheel throwing or intro to hand building. And then the next semester, you take the other class. Um, and then it just kind of keeps going from there with, the, with those classes separated. Um, and <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, I just loved working on the wheel. Um, like I, I just had like this kind of like obsession for it. And I just like was less <laughs> enthused about hand building and like, like, I, I don't know. This is probably like controversial but I just get the feeling that like to some extent with hand building I think you could just figure it out but like wheel throwing I think you would need more help like I think you would have to have someone show you how to like how to throw a lid and then like how how you do like the gallery and um, that or a double walled pot like I think someone would have to show you how to do that where I think I feel like a lot of hand building like there's a variety of ways you can make stuff and like I feel like to a certain extent it kind of doesn't matter like how you do it it's just that you get there um you get to where you want to be I feel like um because, like, you can, I mean, like, just to make a vase, like, you could do it on a wheel, you could uh, slab build it, you could do coil building. It's kind of a preference to how you actually do it, for the most part. Um, I think, there, I, I don't know, there are probably certain things that you couldn't do, but um, I, f I think if you were, like, really really just kind of go at it maybe there are ways that you could take a lot of the methods and just kind of like maybe it's like mixing and matching um but I feel like you could get there maybe at some point okay there are definitely things that could only be hand built you just could not throw that on the wheel unless you like through one thing and then you Frankenstein pieces together. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel but I feel like the hand building stuff, like, I don't know. I feel like it seemed a little bit more straightforward um compared to like the wheel throwing. So I and I just really loved it. So I don't know. That's just kind of like why the classes that I took we're really focused on that. Um, and I don't know, just kind 
stream wise um for ceramic hours I feel like it's just like a little bit better for me to like be working here on the table um I kind of need to build up my wheel throwing skills again because um I have not thrown on a wheel in a while um like I have done a few things here like I don't know well there were a bunch of tiny bases but like really not that many like larger pieces and I have to kind of like build up that skill again and I would not be able to like throw something this large on the wheel where I am like at this moment <laughs> like I kind of like nearly forgot everything <laughs> I forgot a lot of things um because like um the last time so I took so I took that ceramics class and then um, I think maybe a year or so went by because I didn't know if I was gonna um, I didn't know if I was gonna leave the university and I didn't want to be like in the middle of like taking a class and then have to like just be okay for one thing like be paying for the class if I did just like quit working there um but then like not even being able to show up to class if I had an actual like other job that I had to go to if that makes sense a lot of the classes were during the day um luckily they just let me leave and go to class um when I like when I was supposed to be working um, like they're totally fine with that um but that just like that would not work out I don't think with like a like a different company um um and that so there's a little bit there's a period of time and then COVID hit and then like all art studios well I mean you know like everything basically just like shut down and that is kind of the reason why I haven't like <laughs> thrown on a wheel uh since because um COVID shut things down for years and um and then I moved <laughs> I moved to Oregon um so obviously in a different state don't have that studio to go to anymore because it was part of a university and stuff and um like yeah <laughs> um so like for a little while I was trying to kind of like apply for a membership a lot of um a lot of studios here are like have very long wait lists um and I don't know I was just kind of like well, that'd be kind of cool um if I could go into a studio um and work but then I was just kind of like kind of like sat around for a couple months and then I was like I don't think this is happening like I don't think I'm gonna get a membership anytime soon like um because a membership you can use all of the stuff that they have available in the studio such as wheels slab rollers um extruders whatever whatever they have um and then usually that involves glaze um and I was just like, I don't know. <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? I was like, I think I could just do this on my own. I found um, the YouTuber Pottery to the People. And she, um, she shows you how you can kind of like set up a home studio. How you can convert all of those studio necessities um like 
how are you supposed to deal with your clay water? How are you supposed to, like, what do you do with your glaze water? Um, because normally the studio has something and then they just handle it. But if you're at home, it's on you. <laughs> and she just kind of like goes over all this stuff and like how you can do that. Um, and that really, it really did like encourage me to be like, you know what? I think I could do this. I think I can do this from home and not have to rely on a studio to like approve my membership um and be on that wait list and actually ever since um ever since I was in Nebraska so it's been years um I had been setting money away to buy a um to buy a wheel so um it's been it's it's been years it's been years building up um and just um yeah like earlier this year I was able to buy a wheel for myself um so it didn't come out of nowhere <laughs> um uh, I also I'll just say it like I don't I don't have a car um which would definitely be a lot of money I sold my car when I was leaving Nebraska and that's just like something I don't have to spend money on. Like you have to spend whatever money on your tags and gas and oil changes and um, um I don't know all of these things you have to spend money on all of these things and that's definitely something that has been saving me money that I've been able to put into my wheel fund um, <clears throat> um and just kind of like allowed me to um to actually buy one for myself so I don't have to rely on a studio um there are definitely quite a few options to look at. Um, if you are interested in getting one, I just, like, I don't know. Like, I love pottery. I know that I love it. Like, I know I want to keep doing this um, for the long haul. So I went ahead and just bought a Brent wheel, um, which is definitely the more expensive option. But there are a lot, like, I've heard really great things about Shimpo. Um, that's another wheel um, brand. I've heard a lot of really great things about those. Um, and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the girl that does Pottery to the People, um, I'm pretty sure she uses a Shimpo. I, I think, I'm sure they have different um, lines of them, um, like different products, but... Like, I think I have heard really great things about those. There are so many brands, though, if you are looking to buy one. And lots of, like, review videos on YouTube to check out also. Um, but I just kind of, like, I don't know. I wanted to go with something that I trusted. This is, like, like, I don't, like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to have to get something and then worry that... Something like this that's, like, very mechanical um, and have to worry about, I don't know, trying to repair it myself or I don't know, like, how you would get someone to repair a wheel for you. Hopefully that I don't run into that. Um, but I definitely wouldn't want to, like, get a cheaper wheel and then have to, like, um probably get repaired by somebody somehow or do it myself that's even worse um <laughs> like that thought scares me <laughs> like personally like maybe other people really wouldn't care but for me I'm like wow I really hate calling the maintenance guy for my apartment I don't want to have to figure out how to call someone for my wheel I don't even know how that would work I don't I literally have no idea um Anyway, um, yeah, 
Um, <laughs> but the thing here is that, like, it... I've been here living in Portland for a while and, like, doing um, pottery just, like, on my own in this way without a studio for a little while. And that was before I got the wheel. And so I just kind of, like, started off um, mostly making pinch pots. Um, some things are a little questionable. <laughs> I like somehow pinched like a vase, like a very miniature vase together a few times. I don't really know how that happened, but it worked. Um, <laughs> and just like a lot of kind of like slab type stuff, like I was kind of making some of my earlier stuff has like that um, watercolor palette that I made where it's just like a slab and then I... Um, I cut it into the shape that I wanted, like trimming and all of that. Um, and yeah, so I just kind of like, I was, I was definitely struggling. Uh, I still am struggling sometimes, um, but I was like really struggling on like the pinch pot thing. Um, they're looking like really wonky at first. And now I've got that down. Um, and I'm really glad that I did because they're really fun to make. They're so quick and fun to do. I kind of use them as like test tiles in a way because I find them a lot more fun to make and work on than just regular test tiles. Um, and hand building test tiles is really annoying. So sometimes I just go ahead and put random glaze combinations on them. Um, and just kind of like see how they turn out. Um, and I really love that. And so this is, kind, this is really like the extent of how much I actually have been hand building. Um, and why I haven't done very much hand building either. Um, like, I don't know. I'm glad it kind of like forced me to like actually sit down and try it out. Um, and I'm, I'm actually, I'm having some fun with this, like, with this coil building. Um, like, I think I want to do more of this, actually. Um, we have been struggling a lot with the slab building, particularly when it comes to cutting out different shapes and then having to cut the edges so that they like line up at different angles like right angle is not too bad but if it's anything else it's really weird and I have no idea what I'm doing when it like comes to that <laughs> um I think we could do some more like slab built mugs um or maybe we could do um some coil ones maybe that's something we could do um yeah but just to let you know like <laughs> why I'm so bad at like hand building um and yeah because I've spent like so much time um learning how to do things on the wheel which has all gone out the window apparently <laughs> sometimes it just it's just kind of like clicks back in and I'm like oh yeah this is how I'm supposed to be doing this and sometimes it's not I'm just sitting there like I literally forgot how I'm supposed to be doing this um so <laughs> I kind of just want to um work on relearning the wheel on my own before I start showing you guys that um I suppose it probably doesn't even matter at this point because I'm showing you things I don't know how to do in the first place, like coil building, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm not entirely sure like how my Twitch setup would go. Like, um, we haven't had any commenters recently 
um, in the past uh, few days and stuff. Um, but, like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to, like, look at that if I'm, like, <laughs> throwing. I don't know. I think we'll, I think we'll get to that point, um, sometime, maybe just not quite yet. Um, all right, let's see what we got here. Um, I'm kind of thinking that maybe like, so about like this half building it up and then maybe trimming a little bit of this down. Maybe this thing is looking huge. Um, if you didn't watch the video yesterday, um, like I don't know because there's like that is like part of coil building is that like a lot of the time you are making the coils pretty big and like you can see like how thick they are like here's my finger in comparison it's like almost not not really quite as thick as my finger but it's really thick um and like it's like maybe a centimeter thick so we're gonna be carving a lot of the outside off um and that is gonna sort of shrink it in a way <sighs> kind of like inwards um but then it also is going to shrink multiple times until, like, it's actually, like, finished and glazed fire. So I'm really just, like, guessing how big it, is, it should be. I'm not really, like, I don't know. Maybe if I, like, worked with this clay, like, more than I have, maybe I would have a better idea of what to expect. Um, I don't know. But I don't really know um, how much this is going to shrink. This is actually a porcelain, um, which porcelain, I don't know if I, it's a, a true porcelain. I, I feel like a true porcelain is like a high fire one. I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, <clears throat> but it is a porcelain. Porcelains are supposed to shrink more. Um, and then, um, there's no grog in it either. Um, if you had grog in it, the, that really helps, like, if you're building, uh, forms up and, like, holding them up while you're building them. Um, but also, like, um, grog is just, it's fired clay that has been smashed to a pulp, um, into more chunks um maybe sand ish sized maybe bigger um and they will hold your piece up while you're wheel throwing or like um building like this it just kind of like helps you out a little bit um i don't like the feel of it um so i don't i have i'm not using it any right now um but that's a personal preference you can use grog if you want. You can also like, you can make your own grog. Um, it's literally just like if you had like colored clay and you smashed it <laughs> and then you bisque fired it. Like you, um, you can, you can like, it's probably easier to smash it before you bisque fire it. Just so you know, um, <laughs> But yeah, that's what you do. So you smash up the the dried clay and then you bisque fire it um, in like a dish or something. Um, and then you just fold it into your the clay that you want it to be in. Um, and yeah, and you, you can have colored grog. Um, that's really all that it is. Uh, of course, you can just make like I don't know like regular grog um and like I suppose if you just made it out of the, your same clay body and didn't like change it at all it would give you those the properties of just kind of adding stability while you're working on a piece um and then pieces will not shrink as much 
um, if they have grog in it because it's already been fired. Um, so it's not going to like those pieces, those particles that are in it, that are in your piece that are grogged, those are not going to shrink. So there's less shrinkage overall in the piece. Um, when it dries and then when you bisque fire it. Um, so yeah, um, there's a little bit of info about grog for you. Um, pretty straightforward, you know, um, really is just a preference, uh, and just kind of help you out in what you're trying to achieve. Um, grogged clay can be really great for people that, um, are learning on the wheel because when you're working on the wheel, sometimes pieces will not, like, it's harder to build up your height um and the I think the grog can kind of like help you out it's also better if you're <laughs> wheel throwing with stoneware because porcelain will be a little bit it's known to be a little bit trickier to do on the wheel so it's not quite for beginners like if you're really just trying to <laughs> get a foothold in what you're doing um but it's not like it's not like some crazy advanced thing either. It's just like once you know like um the movements and like what you actually are trying to accomplish, then you can, you know, start working with porcelain. Um <clears throat> This is so fun. I think we're getting like I wonder if we can kind of like pinch it into maybe more of a shape that I'm thinking of <laughs> mm -hmm. I kind of want this to like go out more maybe <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I probably should have like sketched out what I was thinking um but I didn't <laughs> um I was just like whatever <laughs> whatever we get is fine <laughs> I guess um, I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna like smush some bits of clay over here. It, this clay is so wet, I don't feel the need to score it. This is so fun. We need to make some more. Maybe we'll do kind of like maybe some like coil mugs or something um, or bowls. I'd love to get more bowls made um, for the shop because <laughs> I think that's just a normal thing that people would want to buy. <laughs> um, same with mugs. Um... Because we're kind of um, <laughs> um, over here in the northern hemisphere, we're going into fall and well, we're in fall. We're kind of like going into winter and I'm just over here making like <laughs> summer things like planters. <laughs> I made like some air plant things, but like, I mean, you could definitely buy air plants if you want. Um, I buy a lot of air plants off Etsy, um, and it's like, you don't, you can't, like, there's nothing, okay, there's nothing stopping you from buying plants in the winter, but people just don't think about it, so it just sounds kind of like an odd thing to buy in the winter, um, so I can only make some more things that, like, maybe people would want to buy, actually. <laughs> Um, and yeah, mugs are definitely on that list. We did make a mug. The one we made previously broke and what happened to that guy? Is it just, I can't remember what I did with it. I don't even know if we fired it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't remember, but we basically like cut off. There's a video. 
um, in the ceramic hour where we just like cut off the handle because the handle literally in the middle of the handle it just broke um if it was at the attachment point um that could be saved because um you could use something like bisque fix to reattach it um you can apparently, despite the name, you can apparently use it on like like greenware pieces, things that have not been bisqued yet. Um, but I think the most common time to like use it is after you fire the piece. Like it looked fine and then you fired it and then there's like a crack that appeared. So I think that's like why it's named that. Um but there was no saving that handle <laughs> so we just we cut it right off and we um yeah just uh adjusted it i can't i literally can't remember i'll have to go look around see what the heck i did with it um i don't know maybe something else happened to it i don't i really don't know <laughs> This poor, like, mug that we tried to do, like, <laughs> serious issues were happening. Um, but, um, we recently finished a different mug, and that one is just currently drying right now. Um, I am slow drying it because you really want to slow down that process a lot. Um, with handles for the handle itself and the attachment points you just do not want that to dry too quickly um because it's gonna crack and break off <laughs> does that sound familiar <laughs> um, sure does so just try to be really careful with it um I've never, I actually just have not done that many handles, really. Um, like, it's a lot of extra, like, it, like, it doesn't seem like a lot, you know, in itself, but it's a lot of extra work. Um, like, if you don't do pottery, you might not know, but it actually is a lot of extra work and a lot of extra, like, like, babying the piece. And, you know, making sure it's drying slow enough, making sure that um, it's always at, like, the right, um, like, um, what's the word? Like, dryness, I guess, or, like, it's moist enough at the correct um, drying point where it should be and all that there's so much there's so much babying that happens with things that have handles or really any kind of like attachment that is happening um and yeah I don't know I mean I don't know I just really have not <laughs> done very many um mugs because of that um so you know just gotta um I, I just have to you know just do it get it over with um try my best and just keep doing it until I've got it you know I've, I've really got it down um just like anything it's just like I don't know it's just kind of like one of those things that I kind of avoid doing <laughs> um but I know everybody always says, you know, you should make more mugs. You should make mugs because everybody loves mugs. And it's so true. It's so true. Um, <laughs> but like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, why? I, I mean, I guess people just don't know, like, how much more effort is going into it just because of this tiny little handle that was added. But yeah um cool um well 
I think I'm just going to like build this in a way and then I'll just kind of like trim off like the kind of like angle and shape that I'm looking for with this. I'm really happy we're almost done with like the actual shape part. Um, so that's cool. Um, so yeah, so let's start wrapping up here. Uh, we've reached our hour mark and I have to go back to work. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we'll tune in. Well, actually, okay, so today is Friday. Um, I don't, I don't know, I really haven't been streaming over the weekend. I'm assuming maybe we'll come back to this on Monday. Uh, if not, just check on the channel if if you feel like it, whatever. <laughs> um, see if, like, there is a new video there for you to check out, whatever. Do whatever you want. <laughs> Um, you can follow along so that it tells you when I jump on for streams, uh, on Twitch. Usually they are, um, so they're scheduled for, uh, Monday through Friday, uh, 1 to 2 p.m. Pacific time. Um, and that is during my lunch hour, but I, there are different times, like, after work or on the weekend that I might jump on and just do, um... I don't know, like an hour or, I mean, possibly more if I feel like it, I guess. Um, um, but yeah, uh, and then all of these videos are going to be um, uploaded to my YouTube at Cali and Co. And you can see the full um, stream archive playlist there, um, as, as well as like some other videos that I have. So I have a couple that are dedicated tutorials for ceramics. I'm working on making more um, like how to's or just kind of like other types of ceramic video, ceramic related videos that aren't just the live stream. Um, so those are in the works. Um, and then there are some other videos on there about like maybe like small handmade business related or just other art topics. So be sure to subscribe to the YouTube so you know when new videos come out. And um, yeah, like thank you so much for being here. Seriously, like just watching the video, like wherever you're watching it and just like showing up really helps out um, both my channels and I really hope you like the content. Leave a comment if you just like feel the need. Hopefully it's good. <laughs> um, and I will catch you possibly on Monday. All right. Bye.